land of the Anishinaabe, Cree, and Dakota peoples, the homeland of the Métis Nation. We also acknowledge Shoal Lake Forty First Nation, who generously provide us with clean drinking water. We are grateful for their stewardship of this land, their protection of the water, and their hospitality, which allows us to live, work, and serve God the Creator here. Good morning. Good morning. And good morning to those of you joining us via the live stream in your comfy chair at home. <laughs> no coffee or comfy chairs here this morning, you all got the hard cues. Um, our order of worship this morning is as usual up on the PowerPoint, and I do hope that you enjoy your time of worship. We'll join now in singing our gathering hymn, Lord, You Give the Great Commission, for those at home, 433 in your Common Praise hymn book. <laughs>
Before we got up this morning and decided to come to church, God was waiting for us to welcome us with grace. When we are unsure of what to do, when we falter before the next step, we come to listen to God's voice, to learn from the one who teaches us all we will ever need to know. When we are surrounded by cruelty and injustice, when our fears cripple our souls, God delivers us with steadfast love. We are set free to be God's sons and daughters. And together we pray. Dear God, there are times when we feel defeated, useless, unloved, and unlovable. Life can be disappointing. We give up and think nothing matters. And even in those times, you come to us. You touch us, lift us up, smile, and tell us you love us. No matter what is going on, you are with us. You love us. Thank you, God, for caring for us so much, for never giving up on us, for giving us new life. Amen. the true bond of peace and of all virtue, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. From the prophet Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 to 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a real boy, for you shall go to the womb I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hands and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant the world of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches a mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on the earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is to remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then, there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. While he laid his hands on her, Immediately she stood up straight and began praising God, praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant, because Jesus was cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey for the major from the major and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, who sits him down for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing and all the wonderful things he, had, he was doing. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, we have an interesting story this morning, don't we? We have an unnamed woman who shows up at a prescribed location to offer worship. She's not seeking anyone out that we know of. She doesn't approach Jesus, according to the gospel, and yet he spots her and he calls her over. All we know is she's lived with this impediment that she has that causes her to be bent over She's living with this impediment for 18 years. And Jesus does what the authorities and the lawgivers and the rule makers of the day thought was an unforgivable thing. He healed her. She stood up straight, and for the first time in 18 years, she could look you in the eye rather than just see the toes of your shoes or your sandals or whatever happened to be on your feet even if it was just bare feet. And so we think about this particular story. We listen to the details of what's going on. She's unnamed. She would have been somewhat insignificant being female during that time, so her name wouldn't have been important. But the miracle that took place was important. The reaction to it was certainly important. Because look how the authorities in the temple responded. Six days. You have six days to work. Six days to do all the things that you need to get done. And yet, on this day, the Holy of Holies, the Sabbath day, you're working. You're healing. And Jesus' response, 
Jesus' response was classic of Jesus. And he said to them, she's been like this for 18 years. Why should she wait one more day? Why should she be bound for one more day when I have the power to do something about it? He said, you look after your animals better than you'd look after this woman. And he put them to shame. And while there were people there who were cheering, I can guarantee you those who were put to shame were probably not all that impressed. Because after all, what difference would one more day make? Well, the difference might have been that she wouldn't have been there the next day. The difference might have been she might have melded back into the crowds and not been back there anymore. The difference might have been that she might never have encountered Jesus in this manner again. The difference might have been 18 years bent over or the rest of her life. And when we talk about the bending over, we know that in this story, or at least I think in this story, they're talking about of the physical, the physical disability that this woman had. But what about the bending over that the church does? When it forces people into certain molds and the weight of that mold causes them to be pressured from the shoulders and the pressure gradually pushes them over and pushes them over a little more and pushes them over a little further still. One of the articles I read this week when I was preparing for the sermon was a person who said, I've never thought of the church as a place where people who have disabilities or who are visible minorities, in many cases women, because they can fall into minorities in the church as well, I've never thought of it as being a really safe place for people to go. And I'm there thinking, okay, let's read on, because it's not the church that I've ever been a part of. Yeah, that's not true. It's not the church that I'd like to be a part of. But undoubtedly, once in a while, we encounter it. We encounter it with the rules and the policies. And I'll be honest, when you start out from seminary, you're a great rule and policy follower. Whatever the bishop tells you, that's what you do. <laughs> that's what I did, because I thought that's what I had to do. And then I discovered there were loopholes. <laughs> And in one of my congregations, because we were, the di diocese that I came from had policies for everything. Policies for funerals, policies for weddings, policies for baptisms, your policy out of your yin yangs. And as one of the members in my congregation said, don't worry about the policies, if there's a loophole, she'll find it. Because <laughs> I, the bishop's retired, we're good. <laughs> At least I think I'm good, that bishop is retired. <laughs> But the policies were forcing people to bend. Not always in a good way. When you go for a funeral and you say to somebody, I have to tell you what the policy says. The policy says, I'm not allowed to let you have a eulogy. Bit of an anathema, isn't it? We're here to celebrate a person's life, but we're not really allowed to talk about them a whole lot, except in the terms of the sermon. But I said to them, there's a loophole. It doesn't say that five minutes before I come in to start the service that you can't talk about that person, that somebody can't give the eulogy. If it happens to run on a little longer, like I'm not going to be there with my clock and make you chop it off. But technically, if you start before I get into the church, it's not part of the service. Technically, if you want your mother carried out in her casket, um, let me fish off Kate St. Mary's, and I already happen to be in the porch of the church as she's being rolled down, technically, the service is done. We can get around it. There's loopholes. Trust me, I've done all this. I'm, I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> this is why it's going to make me really unpopular to bishops. <laughs> But when we make the rules so that they're so hard and they're so fast and they're so uncompromising, we shut people out. So that all they see, all they see are what's down there. 
They don't see what's out here. They don't see the light that God shines in the world and sometimes in the church because they're so bent over by the rules and the policies and the way things are supposed to be according to the authorities that we forget that what we're here for is to minister to the people. What we're here for is to care for whoever walks through the doors. What we're here for is to help people to be able to straighten up and be on bent, not put more pressure on so that they double over even further. We're here to lift the spiritual burdens even when we can't prevent the physical and emotional ones. But we're here to help make the load lighter, not heavier. And when Jesus takes this woman and he calls her a daughter of Abraham, he elevates her to a hearer of the kingdom of God. She's no longer that worthless, easily replaceable woman. But she is an inheritor of God's kingdom because Jesus acknowledges her as such. And likewise, he calls to us. And he asked us, on this Sabbath day, on this Holy of Holies, on whatever your Sabbath day happens to be, are you willing to meet the people where they are and help lift the burdens that they carry instead of adding more to what already weighs them down? Are you willing to be the one who helps make the load lighter instead of forcing the burden and making it heavier? Are you willing to lift them up so that they can see the light, the hope, and the compassion of God, or are you going to push down a little further? Because what we do, not just what we say, but what we do makes a difference. I'm going to finish with a little story for you. And the story is about an old gentleman who used to go for a walk along the beach every day. And every now and then he'd reach down and he'd pick up something on the beach and he'd toss it back in the water. The townspeople, small town probably, were nosy. <laughs> and they wonder, what in the world is this person doing every single day? He goes along the beach almost at the same time every single day. And he stops, he bends, he throws, and he continues on, and stops, he bends, he throws, all the way up the beach, and then part of the way, like, on, on his way back. So one of the young men in the town decided he was going to follow him to see what he was up to. And so he did. And what he noticed was the tide was out. And when the tide is out, all sorts of things get stranded on the beach. Not the least of which can be starfish. And as this man walked along, he saw a starfish, he picked it up, and he tossed it back in. And he went a little further, and he did the same thing. So the young man couldn't resist, and he rushed up to him, and he said, What are you doing? And he said, I'm putting back the starfish. And he said, But look how many there are. There's lots of them. You can't possibly make a difference to all of them. You can't possibly save them all. And he stopped, and he looked at the one that he had in his hand that he was ready to toss <clears throat> back in. And he said, no, I know, but it makes a difference to this one. Likewise, it makes a difference to the people that we encounter. That when we look at them, and we receive them, and we accept them, and we love them, and we have compassion for them, and we help them, to get unbent from the rules, to loosen up the policies, to make people feel welcome, to know that no matter what ails them when they walk through the doors, they will be lovingly received so that they can go out and face yet another week with the burdens that life brings. When we receive them, to that one, we make the difference. And that's all that Jesus asks of us. He doesn't tell us we have to save thousands. He doesn't tell us we have to save the whole world. He just tells us we do it one encounter at a time 
one person at a time, just like this chance meeting with this woman in this temple on this particular day. He could have abided by the rules. He could have avoided the confrontation. He could have left her alone. He could have ignored her entirely. And yet he said, God's compassion, God's love frees you. God recognizes you and God sees you. And likewise, he says the same to us. And he says, now you go and receive others in the same way. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue now with our affirmation of faith. As we say together, we believe in God, the creator, maker of all things. We believe in his son, Jesus Christ, Lord and savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, giver of life and light. We belong to the church, God's family everywhere. Amen. Let us pray to our God, saying, Lord, in your righteousness, deliver us and set us free. Holy God, you knew us before we took our first breath. You uttered your living word and brought forth light, love, and life. You gathered us from the dust of the earth and called us your people. You sent us into the world to proclaim your mighty and wondrous deeds, you are with us even now as we continue our call. Lord, in your righteousness, deliver us and set us free. Mighty God, you have done great things. Who is like you? You alone are the rock of refuge. You alone are our strong fortress. You alone are our hope, and in you alone is our trust. Lord, in your righteousness, deliver us and set us free. Merciful God, your love never ends. We confess to you that we do not always share your love as we should. Where you have called us to live as one body, we exist as divided members. Where you have called us to give our spirit-given gifts, we ignore your call. Where you have called us to forgive, we have forgotten your mercy. Lord, in your righteousness, deliver us and set us free. Gracious God, do not be far from us. Strengthen us that we may be givers of your grace and your, that may your steadfast love be known to all of your children. Send your Holy Spirit to empower our hands, to clothe the naked, feed the hungry, and love us as you have first loved us. Loving God, hear the prayers that we lift up to you. Be with all of us who worship here at St. Paul's and online. Give us hearts of courage and songs of your grace to tell others of your righteous acts and the deeds of salvation. Abundant God, be with those of us that yearn for your restoration and healing. Today we ask your blessing upon Heather, Bernie, and Blaine. We also lift up to the, you those whom we bring before you with our lips at, or in our hearts. Please make your prayers known either silently or aloud.
dawn. And you have Sister Carol. And Brenda Libby. Lord, we also offer to you today our prayers for Emmanuel Berskese, who has died, and his family, who are in mourning. Faithful God, your power and your righteousness reach the heavens. Hear us, your servants, as we follow you to the day when faith, hope, and love will be upon the lips of all of us, your children. These things we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is where the song Kyrie, Christe, Kyrie comes in. We recognize before God the times when we feel anxious about how much we have, when we worry about getting our fair share, when we resent what others have got. When we find it hard to trust, when we struggle or to share or to be generous. completely, with all of our faults and failings, with all of our limitations, learn to give and forgive, to love and give thanks, as Jesus did. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. 
God of glory, receive all we offer this day as a symbol of our love, and increase in us that true and perfect gift. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. It is the light of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, our God, sustainer of the universe. You are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. Glory to you forever and from the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation. Glory to you forever and ever. But we turn against you and betray your trust, and we turn against one another. Again and again, you call us to return. Through the prophets and sages, you reveal your righteous law. In the fullness of time, you sent your son, born of a woman, to be our savior. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our inequities. By his death, he opened to us the way of freedom and peace. Glory to you forever Therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of God and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for sending us Jesus the Christ, who on the night that he was handed over to suffering and death took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks to you, he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Glory, Glory to you forever and ever. Gracious God, we recall the death of your Son, Jesus Christ. We proclaim his resurrection and ascension, and we look with expectation for his coming as Lord of all the nations. We who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring you these gifts. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this offering of your church, that we who eat and drink at this holy table may share the divine life of Christ our Lord. Glory to you forever and ever. Pour out your Spirit upon the whole earth and make it your new creation. Gather your church together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom where peace and justice are revealed, that we with all your people of every language, race, and nation may share the banquet you have promised. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. Amen. And as our Savior taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. 
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Living God, increase in us the healing power of your love. Guide and direct us that we may please you in all things, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord Jesus Christ, who walks on wounded feet, walk with you to the end of your road. May the Lord Jesus Christ, who serves with wounded hands, help you to serve one another. May the Lord Jesus Christ, who loves with a wounded heart, be your love forever. Look for the face of our Lord Jesus Christ in everyone that you meet, and may they see his face in you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Announcements. There were no new announcements this week when I sent out the monkey mail. <laughs> um, so if you didn't get that, um, I'm not exactly sure what was on it now. Biddy's box was on it uh, about school supplies, which of course you can see are overflowing there now. We're out on a table as well as some on the floor. Um, St. Matthew's needed some specific items, hygiene items, towels, food, food, things there. Yeah, the pantry shelves are low. Um, if you prefer not to grocery shop and make a donation, then you can do that as well. What else was there? Doug and Teresa have an anniversary today. <laughs> I happened to see that on Facebook after I got here at the office when I was switching over to St. Paul's and I saw Teresa, was it 46 years? 46 years of winning bliss. <laughs> oh, yes. um, hi, it's Trish, and as you know, every time I stand up here, I'm asking for somebody to do something. Um, and I have a new one today, but I will repeat one thing. Um, we could use another couple of people to be on our team who count the collection after uh, Sunday services. Uh, we've set September 18th as our training date with Bill Coffa, but uh, if you can't make that date, we can figure out another time to train you. So if you are interested in being a part of a team, hopefully just once a month we have to call on you to help out. The other thing is this, this is my new one. Um, at our pancake breakfast on September 24th, um, there will be sort of a formal part of the morning when we have a few words spoken, a couple of speeches, and a ribbon cutting for our kitchen. So I planned some activities for our children during that time. But I need people to help run those little activities with the kids because I'll be um, busy in the hall. So I do have one person but it'd be great if there was another person to help out. You'll just, I'll do all the prep work, I've got all the materials, and I'll just make it nice and simple, some games and crafts and, and that sort of thing. So if you're interested or know somebody who might want to do that, that'd be super. Just let me know, thank you. Are there other announcements? Oh, we're ready for our closing hymn.
in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.